create a boat ramp. Um, and it's not the boat ramp. A normal boat ramp is where you use your car to tow a boat up. This boat ramp is just where I'm going to drag the little boat onto it. So, and right now it's, this is the configuration I was imagining, but it's not sloped enough, so I have to slope this more. So, I'm going to drill some new holes in these pilings to get this, put this down about a foot, and then this will be down a foot here, and maybe a foot and a half here, It'll be closer to the water. Okay, got the meanest bit in the tool shed, my tool shed. It's not a very big one, but it's mean. So it's my foot long, it's probably 14 inches paddle bit. Very small bit, so I don't have to push too hard. It's dull, it's rusty, but at least it's long. At least it makes a hole all the way through this thing where I can tell where I'm going. Woo! Went all the way through. This piling's only about a foot long, so it has a couple inches even after it's through. That went through, now we'll do the other one. much help as a drill is, it really makes your arm sore just pushing on it. Would be a lot easier if I had a sharp blade, a sharp drill bit, but I haven't bought one yet. Okay, now I just have to make sure the hole is big enough for the bolt to fit through by using a bigger drill bit. Since the pilot hole has been drilled, this big bit gets caught a lot. It gets caught on the edges of the hole that's already in there. But the hole that's already in there, I wanted to guide this because I can't, I have to make sure it's straight by using that original hole. That original bit that would go all the way through the piling, that makes sure the hole is straight. This one can only reach halfway, so I have to make sure I follow the original. Halfway both sides. That's that side. One more side. Did you put it in the right hole? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's. I put it in the right place, but when it goes through the wood, it, it can veer off to the side. That's the difficult part of not having a sharp drill bit that's long enough and thick enough. Thick enough for these huge galvanized bolts. 
so we want to lower this 2x6 and so I need to take this bolt out of it and so the nuts back here with the washer the, the bolt has a washer on it and the nut has a washer on it especially because you have to tighten these things so hard just to get them to stay and everything's wet and so you can easily pull pull the bolt through the wet wood. So I'm using the big old manual wrench. This washer's already cemented into the wood. Pulled some wood fibers off with it. Now I just gotta take this out. So because these holes are pretty tight, these bolts are threaded through them. They're, in other words, you can't just some bolt if you if you make the hole big enough, you can push a bolt right through. If you make it bigger than the thread, but these holes are just about the size of the threads. Make it a little bit smaller, especially when it gets wet and the wood expands. Those holes ain't loyal. <laughs> holes are just difficult. <laughs> yeah, so, so I have to wind it back out. This is some exercise. And I mean, I could get, I could use that same drill to unscrew these, but again, it would be better to have an industrial sized drill, a hammer drill, uh, an alternating current, 120 volt, plug in, hammer drill, would probably be best for this. A, a hammer drill that can also just do regular screwing. Okie dokie, there it is. And it will not go in there. Maybe it's right. Give it some more thread. Okay. These holes aren't exactly as far as part as the other, the, the new holes that I drilled aren't as, exactly as far apart as the old holes. And so I need this bolt to sort of aim toward the new hole. Also, I'm doing it one side at a time, which means it's gonna have less of a reach. Is that new level going to be low enough? Yeah, I think so. I guess especially doing high tide. Yeah, especially at high tide. So you might need to wait. If you want to take a boat out, you might need to wait until it gets somewhat, the tide gets somewhat medium or high. Okay. We caught. We now catch. that, yeah, that caught. That's rested in there pretty well. It's not going anywhere. So now we can do the other side. Got this bolt out and put it through this thing far enough so that it would reach this hole. Now I'm just trying to get it to anchor itself in the new lower. Okay, I 
think it's probably anchored. Now, the problem I had last time with the tire spot was that I did not go straight through this piling. So I have to make sure that I'm through it. And last time I put a drill bit through here and messed up the threads of the galvanized bolt, which is a bad idea. But anyway, this time, hopefully, I learned my lesson and I'll make sure that there's an easy hole for this bolt to pass through before it gets all the way, before it gets halfway through. So now you can see my idea that it was about a foot higher. It's a foot, this board is a foot lower now. It's not all the way fastened in, but um, it could be, could make it even lower once it is fastened in. Um, and now the end of this board, the end of this ramp is touching the water where the water is right now, about mid tide. So low tide, it won't be good. But we can shave, we can actually shave these down, um, shave the ends of these boards down so that there's a little bit of a slope and the front of the boat has a slope so it can come up even the, even if the boards aren't touching the water it still might be able to come up the ramp. So we'll see. We'll see how well it performs. So this ramp, um, it's like I could leave the boat just sitting in the water, but then it collects algae and everything on the bottom and gets its barnacles and all that. Um, and during rainstorms, it collects rain and can sink. So I have to be constantly watching out if it's filled up halfway with water or not. Because uh, it doesn't have to fill up all the way. It just fills up enough to for waves to come over the sides of the boat and then it's going to be underwater. So, um, so that's why I don't want to leave it just floating. And then I could pull it up. I mean, it's a light boat. I can pull it myself up on the shore. But then you have to make sure it's tied upright with wind and it kills the grass where we put it in the yard. So it's just annoying. I feel like this ramp is the best idea. I'm trying to get your, your assistant in the video. Rebel, you're supposed to help him. Go help him. He's helping. It's hard if he can. It's hard if he knows how. I know his hips aren't worth anything. <laughs> That's about as much action as his hips can take. <laughs> Okay, here's the test. Let's see how this boat ramp works. It's not stable yet. So I don't know if it's a good idea, but this boat is so light. Ooh, never mind. Carrying it anywhere. Yep. So that's what it'll look like. Let me. Pull it up a little bit more. And then I can take the plug out so that when it rains, it just empties out into the river. <sighs> yeah, that works great. That's exactly what I wanted. It might not quite be wide enough, but we'll see. I think it can, I think it'll still work. It can shift over a little bit. I can. It's on their angle. Yeah, so it needs to go that way? Yeah. Yep. And then the back end needs to go that way. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's almost okay. like if you had a rope um, on the tip and you right. threw it this one, I can pull it forward. Yeah, we could put a, um, a winch on that piling and winch it up. We could also put rollers on these. What true? These would be called bunks on a trailer. That would be awesome. Um, right, starting right under that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, two by six. Yeah, yeah, it'd probably work well. Anyway, I'm gonna take this off. So um, yeah, so I made this just barely wide enough for the boat to fit against this piling. 
And then I'm thinking maybe we'll have a three foot wide ramp coming down, possibly to a floating pier. Although that's gonna be, that will take some work and some more design, creative design. So we'll see, but it could be a three foot wide uh, floating ramp right there.